What's up, YouTube? Griever and Arlene here. Hey, we are working on her Honey Lemon cosplay. Yay! I'm yeah. super excited because now that the wonderful Hunter is done, it was yes. a lot of fun, and I was extremely excited and happy about the outcome. Yes. I know you are as well, which yes. makes me feel even better. Uh, but fun. now, Comic Con is right around the corner at this point. And we don't have a lot of time. And I'm. <laughs> I'm panicking. Like, yes, we already have two done because they were super simple, quick and easy to put together. Mm -hmm. But now all the lovely foam smithing part, which takes a lot, lot of time. So we're going to get started on that. Yep. Um, today, actually, we're going to be focusing on the helmet. So what we first did is I know James uh, is the is a usual watcher of Evil Ted. Mm hmm. And he found this really awesome template that Evil Ted sells as a download for five bucks uh, for an actual helmet. Uh, I guess outline. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it's called his, his it's called his basic helmet pattern, and I mean it's again it's a basic helmet that you could pretty much do with whatever you want, really. Yeah, it is very uh, Magneto esque. <laughs> yeah, which is totally fine. Um, and what we did is we downloaded the template and then. We cut it out, and then I made some adjustments to it uh, before it would come down to like kind of a pointier uh, middle. Yeah. Uh, so it was like just kind of triangle in the middle of my forehead, and then the bottoms here that would come around my cheeks was really thick and came to like right here and very square. Whereas Honey Lemons, it's smaller, it's, it has more curved edges right. to it. So I made some adjustments to the template, which is really only two pieces which is really nice yeah um again when you download it he gives you all the instructions on how to print it out and put it together mm -hmm. then when we adjust uh before we actually uh, fully adjusted the templates we created a little prototype <laughs> <laughs> which Does ain't work. too bad it ain't bad no and also with the cutting and everything since, even though we've been at this for a while now, we're still novices when it comes to foam smithing. Um, a few a few seam issues. We have a few seam issues. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but... We have a few seam issues. Like, there, <laughs> there. This side's really nice, but we... Guess we, which side I did! <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But, but, but no, we have so. figured out, like, you know, the best ways to adhere the contact cement, what we can kind of go a little lighter on just because it pinches a little more and this and that. So. so after we did this, I made some adjustments to the template that I had already adjusted, came with the uh, final design ones that we have over there which we've already cut out the new pieces. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to assemble the final helmet. And then... What we hope to be the final helmet. Knock on wood. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, it's already cut out, so we're just going to glue it together. And then... You want to want to jump into painting today, maybe? Uh, we could try. Well, plastic dip, at least. Well, we, we could try. All right. So. Yay! At least day one of Honey yeah. Lemon. Already off to, or a uh, Honey Lemon helmet. Off to a good start. Yes, that's true. So yay! Alright, let's get to it. <laughs> it's mentioned in Evil Ted's video that you should pre-curl your foam. So, or he'd form it to kind of be the shape you want it to be at. It makes it so much easier. It will make it a whole lot easier. So, hot foam. Be careful when handling hot foam. <laughs> but you also want to make sure your foam does stay warm because it cools very quickly. It does. But, you know, don't burn yourself in the process. That's true. Remember, for all of our tutorials, safety first. We're not always the most, or at least the best in safety. <laughs> <laughs> Though we haven't had any accidents in a very long time. And also, don't forget, um, when using a heat gun on your foam, be careful as to, A, make sure you don't burn it. But B, also, it also does kind of do a bit of a seal on it, so this will actually help when we do plastic the dip later. Hot, 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 hot. hot. Alright, now that that's pre-formed, putting this out of the way so we don't have a uh, burn situation again. I'll yes. never forget. Never forget! Yes. Our big ass can of... Contact cement? Contact cement, yes. 
as we've mentioned in other videos, the way contact cement works is you put a layer on each side, you wait for it to not dry completely, but at least get just tacky and doesn't look wet, and then you can start fitting stuff together. So James is using a pinching technique, uh, much like uh, in the instructions that Evil Ted gives on the uh, pattern, is you're going to actually make uh, reference marks so that you can see where on the foam the two sides should meet up. And it's just great to have to make sure that it doesn't go askew and it's longer on one side when you stretch and pull it. This is not a process you want to rush. Okay, so this part of the helmet is now done, which is the, the center, center ridge. It fits nicely. Uh, one thing we are noticing though, uh, because these are the floor mats we're using are cheap crap from Five Below. Um, it's tearing. So, and I mean we heat form this fairly well, but it's still tearing. Uh, we can fill, we can gap fill that. Yeah, we'll let's at least be able the, to get this. Yeah, done. let's let's get the sides on and we'll see where we're at from there. Oh yeah, so um, when we downloaded uh, and purchased the patterns. Uh, I have a notoriously small head, so I was like, maybe we should get the child one. But then thinking about it a little bit further, we decided to go with the adult one because when I get a kid's head, it's not like it fits. Well, the adult size version fits me, but it doesn't fit James. So and when the time comes we create something for James, we're going to have to uh, magnify the template. Apparently uh, my head version. is way larger than Evil Ted's. Well, he does say in his video, he's like, yeah, I have a notoriously small head. You're not alone, Evil Ted. You're just not alone. Your armor is going to be set in pimento. Set in what? Pimento. Piment? Pimento? I like a pimento olive. Mm-hmm. I don't like olives. It's like the one thing I can't eat. Everyone always makes fun of me for it. I don't like olives. Huh? I don't like olives. Well, my best friend Bree in the whole wide world, y'all met last year at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. At least in my Comic Con video. Um, so, olives are like her favorite thing in the world. So, for her birthday, whether I'm with her or not, I always try a new olive every single year in hopes that I will one day find an olive I like so we can have olives together. <laughs> we're going on, let's see, I started when we were, she was, I want to say she was turning 19. So yeah, about 10 years now. I still don't like olives. <laughs> I didn't know there were that many types of olives. Oh, there are many, many types. You got black olives, green olives, pimento olives, stuffed olives, um... The, what's it called? The like big. Greek olives? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> but there's a lot of different types of olives. I try them every, try a new one every year, and I just, I can't. I just can't. Eventually, I'm gonna have to start like duplicating and hoping that uh, my taste buds have changed. Mm. Becky for her bridal shower. What? Look, they have olives in to-go cups. Oh my god. <laughs> no, that's too creepy. We were just talking about olives. <laughs> Not what? two Here seconds ago. No. Plus, look, I'm gonna get you these because you smell it. Your mother smells of elderberries. <laughs> oh my god. to contact cement them together and hopefully it'll fit like a true helmet should the fact that this is going so smoothly thank you thank you evil evil ted you've made life so much easier yes i because I, I legitimately wanted to like create our own and i'm like i'm just gonna spend the five dollars it's honestly worth it oh yeah 
Because especially now that we have this pattern, we can use it for just about anything. Yee! So unfortunately, with the registration marks, you do have to kind of bend and pinch in weird ways. Uh, when we were doing the prototype, I was like, oh, let's use the 3 millimeter foam. That way we don't waste the 10 millimeter foam that we have. And, well, James pointed out that because the 3 mm foam is so small, you're not going to be able to actually glue the sides together. So it's very important for things like this where you're having two sides needing to meet at an exact seam. You kind of, you need that extra thickness so that it will actually stick together. Oh my god. It looks like, it looks pretty spot on. No. What? I looked at it and it reminded me of a green guy from Flintstones. The Great Gazoo? The Great Gazoo. Tell me that is not his helmet to a T. It just, it just needs little antennas. <laughs> I am the Great Gazoo. <laughs> there you go. That's what it reminds Once it has the paint job, I'm sure I'll be able to see Honey Lemon. Okay, so this is day, what, three, four? Something. Something of the helmet. Um, schedules have been a bit crazy lately. You're going to see later in this video, I'm exhausted as crap because I was just been in San Francisco. But before I left, I was able to actually finish Honey Lemon's... Ah! I don't know where the camera's pelting. Beautiful. There we go. All right. Her side pieces of her helmet. I'm actually so happy about how symmetrical they turned out to be. Um, so I didn't actually film doing it, but I made this little template for you guys to see. Uh, the outer ring portion was actually made from the inside of a painter's tape. I just plopped that down, chased the circle on the inside of the like cardboard ring. Mm -hmm. Then the second one is actually from the outside of a paint can. And then the little one is the trace of a candle votive. Um, and then I just kind of sketched this lovely conage uh, just by looking at the actual photo. And I'm so happy the dimensions came out like <laughs> so, so utterly perfect. I'm, I'm so, so happy. All right, so next, oh, I uh, attached each of the pieces on to each other first, because um, I did make these out of model magic from Crayola. You can use any type of air dry clay, just so that they're lightweight enough and they're not going to weigh this down so that it just flops and would break off. Um, and then I just contact cemented some spaces together and then to the actual helmet itself. Next steps, why we are in James's shop, is he's going to quick seal all these level, lovely little uh, gaps and edges, and then we can do the usual plastic dip and painting, and it's already <laughs> almost done. This was much quicker than I expected, and I'm very happy. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> that this, because I was really thinking, oh dear lord, the helmet's gonna be difficult. This has been the least stressful of the entire goddamn process. I'm very happy. Thank you for knocking on wood. <laughs> Alright, James, off you go. Okay, so to fill the gaps, I am just using uh, this quick seal. Uh, it's just a silicone caulk. Um, this is Ultra, which is fine. Maybe a little bit more expensive than the normal stuff. My suggestion is not to get this particular one because this is actually, this goes on white but dries clear. So sometimes when you're filling in a gap, it looks a little bit recessed when it's actually not. So my suggestion would be is definitely buy white. <laughs> or a tinted version. Best way to do it is you take your silicone, you fill it in the gaps, you get a little bit of water on a finger and then you smooth it out. You have a little bit of working time with it so it's not like, you know, God forbid an immediate thing, but you still want to be at least kind of quick with it. And there you go. Now it looks like it's sealed all the way around. And <coughs> as with anything, worst case scenario is if it does, when it dries, it will kind of shrink a little bit. If there is a little bit more of a recess than you would like, you can always, once it's dried, just apply a second coat of it so that there is no shrinkage. It's it's going to take a while to dry. Um, when I did the gap filling on the helmet originally, I just kind of let it sit overnight. 
Hey guys, it's another lovely new day, new installment to work on my Honey Lemon helmet. It's been a lot of weeks <laughs> kind of scattered, so I can't 100% remember what I have and haven't filmed. Uh, so just a quick recap, we used a stencil that we bought online for just $5, built the he helmet, edited the actual stencil we had, built a new version, uh, so that it looked a little bit more like actual Honey Lemon's helmet itself. We contact cemented the pieces together. We put a uh, flex seal in between the seams to make sure they were nice and tight. And then I made these lovely side pieces that came out so symmetrical, I'm so happy, out of Model Magic, the air drying clay. Let them dry, stuck them on here with some more contact cement and then brought it to James's workshop for some more Flex Seal uh, to make sure that they really have a good hold on here. And then James was very gracious enough uh, to plasti dip the whole helmet. So now it is time for painting and that should be easy. And then we're done. Thank God. <laughs> Alright, um, so I'm gonna get started. I, it took me forever actually to find uh, paint that matched the color of my dress uh, since they do have to be the same color. So I ended up finding an acrylic which since this is not a piece that needs to be quite flexible we can use acrylic for this uh, in this nice craft smart fuchsia. Uh, hopefully this is enough. If not I bought it at Michael's and I can just buy another one, hopefully they have it in stock. And then she does have a few yellow accents, well they're more orange, but I already have this lovely yellow that is close enough for me. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. So it has been a very long day. The sun is now down, which is why I have horrible lighting now, my apologies. I need to invest in some new equipment. Um, but the helmet's looking pretty good. Uh, it required a lot more extra coats of paint than I had anticipated. I had to keep swapping between sponge brushes and regular bristle brushes of all different sizes, make sure I get all the crooks and crannies and was able to get these nice uh, symmetrical curved lines just to accentuate the shape of the helmet itself. It's coming along. Uh, it's, I'm gonna, I've been letting it dry obviously in between coats. I might need, I wanna say two more coats on the sides here uh, just to do some corrections of uh, overlapping of the yellow and the purple paint. Um, but shouldn't be too, too difficult to fix. And then the lovely task of painting the inside of this black. I realize you guys can't really see on camera at the moment, again, because of the horrible lighting, uh, but we'll get that done. The hope is that I can attack this tomorrow, but it's been crazy, guys. Busy schedule. But we will be ready for Comic-Con and we will show up in beautiful Honey Lemon style. Hello beautiful people. It is day two of painting and after a good night's sleep I'm looking at it and it looks, I don't know exactly what I said last night because it was about one o'clock in the morning <laughs> uh, when I actually stopped painting. Uh, and I remember going to bed thinking, ah, it looks like absolute crap. But seeing as it's the next morning, it looks really good. It definitely still does need a couple more coats. You can still see some brush strokes in certain areas, uh, especially around these two pin stripes in the back. Uh, it's still a little uh, transparent. So I'm gonna fix that, make sure it's just nice and smooth. And then the helmet will be done. I realize I've said that like five times throughout this video. Because uh, it should have been faster than it was. <laughs> but overall, I'm happy with the end product. Even though we're not there yet, I'm already happy with it. 
All right, guys, so it has been more days than I would like to admit to finish this helmet. Life, as I've said multiple times, life's been crazy. Schedules are so super weird, but I am extremely happy with this. Look at it. Look at its glory. Oh my, I'm... It's not perfect. Nothing ever is, but this is... I could not ask for better, honestly, for the time frame that I'm at. Um, I, as you guys can see, I'm already wearing my wig and my glasses, so let's see with it on. Ooh. Oh, that is super comfy. Ah. I just to make sure that I style my wig appropriately so that it'll go underneath. But otherwise, that ain't half bad. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you guys didn't see me putting these on because I realized last minute last night, uh, so I, or actually two nights ago, uh, so I rolled these out of more Model Magic like I did for the side pieces up here, uh, rolled them out super duper thin, uh, let them dry for, I want to say about 14 hours. These took two days to dry uh, just because it was thicker and there was more clay to actually uh, dry, whereas the Model Magic for over here, because I rolled it out so super thin it just took uh, about half a day or so painted them during my work lunch hour <laughs> went back to work ran back home and then contact submitted them on right after that and it's it's so perfect i'm so happy yay we're getting close to the end here all that's left is the purse the shoes and the armor which will be a huge <laughs> a huge undertaking but you know what this gives me a lot of confidence we will get it done in the next what uh <laughs> three weeks yay <laughs> yay comic-con 2019 <sighs> all right well thank you guys so much for tuning in and bearing with us with all the our crazy projects uh you know the youtube drill like comment subscribe uh, hit that notification bell to make sure you see all of our videos and you're going to get a lot of Honey Lemon videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.